What's up guys, so today we will be changing out the injectors from 550s up to um, some 750s. So we're going to be putting those in. Okay, I don't know if you can hear Kyle's car running, but anyways, we're in. All you got to do is take these two screws off of these. Of course, it'll probably be on your car. <laughs> take the little cover off. And then you can grab them with pliers or maybe twist them out, but oftentimes your stock ones will be in there so hard. Just grab them with pliers right here, twist them out. Okay guys, so we are going to start with assembling this intake again. Because I figure why not, I mean, it's not going to hurt to get it back together. Um... That way when I put all the bottom end, I really don't have to do a whole lot of fucking around. That's my goal anyways. So really... Ramsey. Sorry. Set your spacers in there. O-rings. These are not injector O-rings. They're just... Technically they are, but more of like, I think Nissan calls them dampeners. We're gonna go this way. Intake on. Line up the bolts. There we go. Okay, guys, so that is nice and assembled. Got the new fuel injectors in there. It'll be able to sit on the engine now, nice and pretty. I'm not going to put the throttle body on yet because I have it in that bucket down there but I want to paint it up and clean it up and stuff so yeah pure insanity that looks so good you gotta love when you don't even have the internals of the engine in you can see through it straight to the other side but you're already mocking up a turbo fun stuff fun stuff Anyways, I love that thing. I'll take a million pictures with that. I love it. Also, I didn't film it because we were working on it kind of together, but I did wire in Greg's fan, his second fan. Um, it goes up in here, and I added a relay in it for area in there for it. Um, that's for his air conditioner, so his AC works. I mean, just at a dead stop, you need your fans to be on, circulate the air and uh, you know pull air away from the condenser while the AC's on and uh, the circuit sports fan controller this guy doesn't have a wire to trigger or a second relay to trigger for like AC use so that's kind of funky um, that's what sucks I mean I had a really cheap one that even had that and uh, it was like literally like dirt cheap it was this one that's like in here so it has two relays that allows you to run your AC so Come on, man. Circuit Sports, that thing is like four times as expensive. Fix your stuff. Um, hmm. Do I have anything else interesting to show you? It is the same turbo that... You know, I could have gone with like a GTX 2871R, but man, it just looks pretty. Like, this is the same turbo that he has. You can kind of see down there, except he has the Tome manifold. And his uh, valve cover is just freaking gorgeous. Phoenix Specialty Coatings did that. Um, also, he doesn't have a dongle on his pipe. 
I have a little dongle that comes off my intercooler pipe that I hate. But yeah, I don't know. We're getting there guys. I mean, just a few more days and hopefully we'll have the inside. I'm putting in the crank tomorrow, like I said. And also the rods, I mean, we'll figure out hopefully this weekend, if not Monday, so. Okay guys, we are putting the SR20 together finally. Kyle's here helping me. Guys. Um, we are doing the deadliest part of the job, which is putting these C-clips in. Um, we got one done, we're gonna do all the rest of them. I'm gonna try to time lapse it on my phone up there, but I don't know what it can see. So don't judge me if it doesn't work. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the, we got the, the rings and stuff on the pistons. We haven't clocked them yet. Um, the oil ring is okay. They're not. It's not over budding. It's budding right up next to each other. Um, the C clips are in. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the block. Um, there probably won't be much time lapse footage, but I'll try. So. Okay, guys. So we got the block together. Well, the short block. We got the rods and the pistons, all that crap in there. Um, now we're gonna focus on the head. Um, I have this tool. That's a Nissan tool. Grips the head. You push it down. It's to do recessed valves. So I'm hoping we can do that and then do our valve. So we'll see. Can you see okay? It's fine that you're still recording. Anyways guys, we're parts washing the head. We just lapped the valves and got the valves basically made it to the head. So we marked everything. That way we can assemble it back together. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, we might, I don't know if we should throw the head on tonight. That would be an easy thing to do, but I don't know if we will. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna get the head all cleaned up and uh, move on to whatever's next. We are uh, installing the valve seals into the head, and then we will be doing the valves, the springs, the retainers, all that good stuff. So yeah, pretty much. Going together pretty smoothly, other than almost losing a sham and forgetting shit. So, hopefully, we don't mess up again. So, we were doing the valve springs and our spring compressor broke. So, these are the things that people kind of don't show you sometimes when they fuck up. Um, <laughs> luckily, we have this little cracker box shitty welder on site. So, oh, yeah. we're going to be able to fix our tool hopefully and finish the job. We have, uh, I want to say, how many is that? 10 valves to go? Yeah, just about. Yeah, like 10 valves to go, and uh, hopefully we make this thing bigger and stronger than ever. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Keep the update. Okay. Go for it. Okay, guys, so we got the Wyzeco pistons in tonight, the Manly rods in, and then we also did the the Brian Crower um, titanium valves, springs, and retainers. Uh, ow, there's the underside of it. We had lapped the valves and did everything to reseal them because I was having some pro some problems with them, um, with them leaking. So, and brand new valve seals. Uh, there's some more parts right there that'll go in the car. We made a mess for tonight. We broke a tool. We fixed it. We got the job done. Thank you, Kyle. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So, cool. What's up guys? So today will be, uh, there is a glow. Sorry, I was looking at some stuff with the tool. Um, we are going to be putting on the head probably. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the head up even though I don't have the timing cover on, um, or the oil pump. And I know that I can do it afterwards, I believe. So, because I mean, people didn't take off heads to, tame, to change the time and Jane. I mean, that didn't happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Put the head on, bolt it on. I'm not gonna put the cams in yet or anything, but the cam needs to be torqued. I mean, the head needs to be torqued down for what we're gonna do next. Then I'll be able to do the time and chain, and then I can put the oil pump on as long as I leave the upper oil pan off, which I'm gonna do anyways, because then I can slide the pump in. So I mean, that's what I did anyways when I changed it in the car. So I'm gonna get cleaned up kinda, and then we'll get to putting this head on. Okay, guys, you always want to make sure that the surface of your head is clean. If you didn't get it machined, make sure it's cleaned. Um, always check to make sure the head is flat um, if you're not going to get it machined. All you got to do is straight edge it with a really nice straight edge measure. If you can get in there with a feeler gauge usually more than four thou, 
under the straight edge than in any of these or anywhere on the head, then your head is not flat. I mean, not head. It works for the head too, head and block. Um, check your ESM, your service manual, because that might be different on the spec, but just always make sure each one of them is flat. I got the block board. They did not have to machine the head flat. It was okay, it was perfect. So it's fine, it's just cleaned up. The head on the other hand, as you can see, was very messed up right there. Um, that's in the combustion ring, so it's really not gonna matter, they told me. Since, I mean, imagine if this ring went all the way around, that would be inside, obviously, or it couldn't have hurt it. So it's not gonna mess with that. That's what the machine shop told me. Anyways, I did have the head milled flat. That's perfect. Now, always make sure your dowels are in. If you don't have your dowels in, it will not line up correctly and you will have big problems. You always want to make sure it's free of oil, free of anything. The oil, I mean, mainly only, it refers to if you're going to do what I'm doing, which is I, I am using a metal Cometic head gasket and I will also be using the um, Permatex copper spray gasket. This is good stuff. Obviously, it has a head on it. Um, we've used that here at Nissan. All Nissan cars nowadays use metal head gaskets. They are very similar to the Cometic head gasket. We always use that. It's almost recommended. I've seen people swear by it. I've used it on head gasket jobs. Never had a problem. Greg used it on his Kugi job on his uh, SR20. I'm going to do it to mine. It just adds a little bit of stick. It's not making a gasket with that, so don't assume that. Um, anyways, I'll probably time lapse throwing the head in. First, I'm going to get the ARP headwear out. It took me forever to look for these dowels, so don't lose them, like I said. And uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Alrighty, so make sure that when you're using, like I'm using ARP headwear, this is very expensive headwear. Um, make sure that you follow their instructions and also make sure that the, the items or the parts are not damaged when you get them out of the box. And notice. See that little shoulder right there? I mean, it's not gonna wanna focus. See how this doesn't? These are two different thread pitches. It will only go in one way. Do not force it in that way. On an SR20, that little shoulder goes towards the bottom. And then, you wanna lube them up with their ARP stuff. Hand tighten them in there. I mean, drop the stud in. I don't have the head gasket on yet. Drop the stud in and just hand tighten it. Which, I mean, I'm just using a little Allen head, they have an Allen head at the top of them. And I'm just gonna get them like a tiny bit tight, not very tight, it says do not do that. So follow the directions. I just like to run them together like that, get it all over it. Do the same thing for all of them. Bam. I'm going to put them back in. I took these out in order to uh, get the head off because it was much easier, or get the head on it was just much easier. I know you can do it with the studs in, but I think you just have to do the timing chain later if you do that. And as you saw, I changed my mind about that whole ordeal, so yeah. And yes, you do need these. Okay, get all your nuts on your studs and you'll be good to go. Like I said, try to avoid dropping any of them in there <laughs> so you don't have to go hunting for them, fishing for them I should say. These are a 12.13 millimeter, which is kind of sketchy but there's a reason they do it so I'll leave it to them. Don't cross-thread anything. Now the ARP head uh, wear, or whatever hardware, head wear, hardware, whatever you want to call it, says to do it in 90 foot-pounds at three intervals. So we're going to go 30, 60, 90. Um, this can get a little sketchy. Um, they might sound like they're going to break at times, but uh, just follow the tightening procedure. 
You should be okay. First one, we're going to go to 30 foot pounds on all of these. There we go. For all of them. Is it good? Now we're going to go to 60. This is when things start to get a little scary. Well, guys, we're going to go to 90. Ninety foot pounds. You want to get this as precise as you can. If you're not doing angle, get this as precise as you can. You hear that? You get it. Alrighty. Whew. We're done. Done torquing. Thank God. I have like a minute left with you but I am gonna go ahead and put in the spark plugs I did gap them correctly because since I'm right here why not and I did put some NECs on the threads took out the old plugs and just said fuck it I'm gonna go ahead and put in the new ones I went with the uh, the eights by NGK this is the stage eight plug heat range eight um, for high boost and aftermarket turbo which is what I'm running um, I had the sevens for a long time on the stock turbo doing high boost they did well this is a much uh, much different looking spark plug I could tell you that I probably should show it to you but anyways guys I'm running out of time on my SD card um, that's probably gonna be it for today I'm about to pack up clean up go home tomorrow I'll measure for the valves and make sure everything is okay and then uh, hopefully the shims don't have to change and then I can just you know slap it together but thanks for watching guys really appreciate it um, this is a video with a bunch of stuff in it. I'm sorry that it was everywhere. And uh, just um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon probably. And sorry that was my camera mount. Um, but yeah. I look forward to this thing running. It's going to be pretty fun. The break in time is going to suck. Um, but yeah guys. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.